Hi, Dr. Jacobson. Thank you so much for joining us today. Can you please start by talking a little bit about your research? Oh, that's a dangerous question for you to ask me because I could talk for, for hours about that. I'll focus, though, because I know this is really about teaching mostly, but I'll just tell you a little bit. Um, in terms of major topics, one would be social influence and persuasion in organizations. How can we um, encourage people to behave in ways that are optimal for themselves and for the organization at large? Uh, so I'm interested in understanding those kind of dynamics. In addition, in, within the last five years or so, I've launched a new program of research focused on workplace mistreatment. And what is it that causes people to harass others, to bully others, to behave in, in uncivil ways? It's important to me to study that because if we understand what those underlying dynamics are, we can potentially throw a monkey wrench in that process and we can reduce those negative behaviors. So that's just a little bit. Great, thank you. And what courses do you teach? Currently, I'm only teaching the one course, Management uh, 506, which is managing people in organizations. I'm teaching it in accelerated online format. I've taught the course for uh, about 12 years now, uh, mostly in face-to-face -face formats. I've only taught it uh, online for the last year. I also at Anderson taught interpersonal and team dynamics, and I created a course in power and influence in organizations. I've taught leadership. Um, in the psych department, I've taught a PhD level seminar in social psychology, and I've taught statistics and research methods. Great, thank you. And can you talk a little bit more about the Management 506 course, please? Sure, so this version of the course, and it's very fresh in my mind because I've only converted it to accelerated online within the last year. So normally it would be a 16 week face-to-face -face course, at least normally in the sense of what I've taught. Each week would then focus on a different major topic area relevant to the field of organizational behavior. That's what the course draws from. I've compressed that into eight weeks. And so we've got weekly modules that sometimes focus on a couple of those topics. And some of those topics would include things like uh, individual differences, motivation, uh, social influence, as I've already mentioned, organizational culture, team dynamics, um, et cetera, et cetera. There are many, many more topics. Each of those areas in its own right could justify a full 16-week class. And in terms of those topics, what would you say are some of the, the practical implications and the ways that students might see them being applicable in their in their work life? Yeah, that I started to do work on is mistreatment in organizations. So bullying, um, incivility, uh, harassment type behaviors. Can we understand uh, what causes people to do those things as a way of then short circuiting that process and reducing that in organizational settings? You have taught in both face-to-face, um, in, -face, in person, as well as in online formats. What advice do you have for students coming into a fully online program like the online MBA or the Master's in Project Management? I will speak from my class, specifically in how I've designed it. Um, obviously, I've never been a student in my own class, but I've spoken to students I, one of my cornerstones is to try to be really open and get feedback from students that will help me improve the class. So I'm constantly, constantly improving it. And some of that feedback um, that I've received is that it's really important to be well organized. So students who are working full time, for example, uh, can perform successfully in the course, but those who do are ones who are, are organized. And one of the biggest tips that, that I would give to students based on things that I've heard from other students is that they dedicate a block of time each day uh, to focusing on the course. Now, some days they might dedicate more time than others. In total, it probably will take them 10 to 12 hours a week to perform well in the course. Not trying to do that all on the Sunday before the module closes is a really, really big recommendation that I would give. A lot of these concepts are a little sticky and they're, they're, they can be hard to understand. It takes a while for you to sort of ruminate about them before sometimes it clicks. So not waiting and immersing yourself from the very beginning, devoting a little bit of time each week, I think can help students. So students can be successful, but one of the biggest additional recommendations I would make is don't try to take two accelerated online classes at the same time. Uh, that's just way, way too much. 
uh, might even be too much for people who aren't working full time, but especially if you are. What would you advise students to keep in mind in dealing with faculty and other students in an online course format? I think what I'm going to say here applies not just in an online format, but maybe especially so. So one of the things that a lot of people have pointed out, there have been editorials written, is a reduction in civility in our society in general. And I've anecdotally sort of witnessed some of that myself. I think that's crucial for, for students in an accelerated online format because so much of the communication is through you know, uh, digital media, through emails, through discussion boards where there's a lack of context and it's really, really easy to misperceive something that wasn't intended to be uh, uncivil as, as being uncivil. So learning to take the perspective of your audience, who am I communicating to, what kind of emotional state are they likely to be in, how might they interpret what I say uh, is really important. And that's something that I try to model in my communications with students as well. But I think a, a, a dedicated focus on learning to be professional uh, learning to behave in a civil manner is maybe one of the biggest pieces of advice I would give, not just for the class, but for future professionals in general. What can <clears throat> students expect from you in, in your online class? Right, so two things that I'll mention. One is enthusiasm. So I gave up um, a promising career in marketing to go back to school, <clears throat> to spend you know hours, weeks, months, years of my life trying to publish mm -hmm. uh, enough so that I could have a job to be in this position in front of students. And, and I really try not to forget that. Um, specifically, try not to forget that initial passion for the topics that brought me here in the first place. Mm -hmm. One can be passionate without being passionate um, about conveying that to students, and, and I'm actually passionate about both of those things. To see a light in a student's eye is something that just keeps me going. So they can expect enthusiasm from me, but I hope that my former students would say that I behaved in a very professional and civil way. If I'm expecting that from students, one of the best ways to teach them how to behave in that way is to model uh, that behavior. So practically speaking, those are all kind of glittering generalities, but practically speaking from a student's perspective, I'm, I'm prepared, uh, I'm organized, I've put a tremendous amount of thought, hours of thought into every assignment, Every lecture, I write up detailed expectations for each assignment. Um, a lot of those have been amended over the years based on things that I've learned that I could do better, uh, based on feedback from students. And then I grade um, based on rubrics that I communicate with students in advance. And it's really important for me to be fair um, uh, and not give anyone undue advantage in that grading. Also, communication time. Uh, and response time is really important for an accelerated online class. Students don't want to fall behind. They want to know how well they're performing. And so I make sure that all assignments, uh, graded assignments, are returned within one week. A lot of times it's actually faster. And then in addition, communication time is really important. A student might be confused, send me an email. I don't want that to sit in my inbox for three days. Um, when there was an opportunity for that student to get some feedback that would help them learn the material. So I communicate no less than a 24 hour response time for email communications or discussion board communications. Usually it's a lot faster than that. Okay. But I, at least so far in teaching the class, haven't violated my one week um, limit on grading. And, and usually it's actually quite a bit faster and I've not violated my 24 hour limit limit in communication. So that's really important. I also try to communicate really frequently through announcements. Um, if something came up where I wasn't able to meet one of those uh, deadlines, I would communicate that with students well in advance. Great. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. Well, thank you.